gamers come forth and gather around. The Gamer Hour is back with more game news and gameplay to be found. I'm your host, Travis Cochran, still here out of Times Square, New York City in Reuters Studio. In tonight's show, I get surrounded. Chris, you got this? Oh, God. Oh. My guest clutches up. Nice work, nice work. Finish him, yeah. Nice work. And together, we tell a lifeline how to heal up. How do red, I use my... Red, red med kit. No, not no, that. that's not the wrong that. thing. But before you get to see that tomfoolery, we gotta talk about new games, new updates, and of course, new delays headed your way. You ready for a huge leak on the new Battlefield game? Yes! Well, here it is. The new Battlefield may be set in, no, not Russia, not the US, but Japan. Yeah, popular leaker Tom Henderson posted a sketch of a map set in Japan that will be shown in the upcoming reveal trailer of the game. The drawing depicts a rocket launch site with skyscrapers surrounding it, all from the view of a helicopter pilot's cockpit. And even better, a tornado is drawn storming through the map. Awesome. I now know how DICE comes up with their map designs. Japan. Rockets. Tornadoes! We got our new map, boys and girls. <laughs> the new update for Milsim Squad adds a replay system into the game. Players can record and manage full replays of their game while, get this, in the game. The system isn't fully fine-tuned yet, as fast-forwarding and rewinding could crash the playback. But at least now, you can finally figure out who sniped you from 2,000 meters away. Apex Legends hit 100 million players last week. Congrats, responding EA. As a result of this milestone, a trailer was released thanking the community and promising for even more content to come, including a new Olympus map update and a new legend named Valk with aerial abilities. Meanwhile, over at DICE, Battlefield 5 Firestorm hit 100 players last week. Okay. It may have dropped down to 97 by now. <laughs> More delays are on the way, folks. Yep, Minecraft's next update, Caves and Cliffs, was supposed to come out this summer, but is now being delayed to the end of the year. The update will improve and introduce new terrains and life forms from the world below that you all can't seem to get enough of. Seriously though, if you can't wait that long for the update, just grab the shovel in the garage and head to the backyard. <laughs> and here's another delay for you. Assassin's Creed Valhalla's DLC is getting delayed, but only for a couple weeks. It was supposed to come out on April 29th, but is now set to release on May 13th. This new expansion, Wrath of the Druids, is set in Ireland around a mystic cult. And it's safe to say that this cult is far worse than the potato famine. Good luck. Days Gone is coming out on PC on May 18th. Even better, this is just the beginning of Sony's initiative to bring their exclusive titles to PC, as more PlayStation games will be ported over later this year. These PC ports will come with ultra-wide support, unlocked frame rate, FOV slider, improved graphic detail, mouse and keyboard support, and more for PC optimization. So you're telling me I may be able to play Uncharted 4 in 4K at 144 FPS? Sony, you had me at unlocked frame rate. <laughs> Upon hearing all this news, Microsoft replied with, about time. <laughs> Nvidia announced that their GPUs will be in limited supply throughout all of 2021. Yeah an ongoing shortage of electronic parts due to the pandemic will prevent the manufacturer from being able to keep up with the high demand. And admittedly, Nvidia believes this demand will not be met till next year. That's a lot of people in 2021 without 3080 graphics cards. Those are some serious first world problems right there. <laughs> a man who does have a 3080 and has a vertical leap of 45 inches is our guest tonight. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome for the wide receiver of the Houston Texans, Chris Conley. Chris, glad to have you here, man. Man, thank you guys for having me. Congratulations on becoming a Texan, by the way. You excited to throw on the blue and red jersey? I am. I haven't worn navy in a while, uh, since high school, actually. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It's about time to bring the color back. That is, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm looking forward to playing in an indoor. You know, I've played in a lot of extreme weather, uh, cold, uh, snow, heat. Uh, but now playing in an indoor, I'm looking forward to that uh, for sure. Definitely for my feet. You want that indoor air conditioning and be totally comfortable. I feel you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, games are tough enough as is. Uh, so take a little bit of load off with the with the weather. Uh, it's a welcome change. Love it. Now, are you already making plans for the big move out to Houston? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, looking at a couple of different houses. Uh, in the Houston area, getting ready for that move. Uh, and we'll be heading out there uh, within the next couple months or so. Very cool. So already making the plans, got to figure out how you're going to get your PC out there as well, I know. So <laughs> yeah, you know, I think at this point, um, my rigs here at my house in Atlanta are kind of big. So I think I'm going to just build a smaller gaming streaming PC and take that with me because these these are water cooled, they're massive. And uh, I don't know if I want to lug that around the country. I feel you, man. Just just create a new uh, build and you'll be you'll be set. Exactly. You know, this uh, COVID gave me a lot of time to build PCs and I'm a big fan of these ones that I got here. Uh, they were kind of my project PCs. You know, I made them uh, very stylized. One is uh, themed after Marvel's uh, Black Panther. The other one's themed after Killmonger. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about them, but they're they're way too heavy to be traveling with. <laughs> Now, I know you're a total foodie. Please tell me you've already put together the list of barbecue spots you're going to be hitting up in the town. Uh, I haven't put the list together, but thankfully there's been a lot of Houston fans who've been uh, in my stream and they've been dropping a bunch of suggestions in my Discord. And so I'm going to go to that list and I'm just going to hit them up one by one and go and eat at all those spots. It's going to be stiff competition, though. I was in Kansas City for four years. Their food is excellent and the barbecue is really good. But I'm interested to see what Texas has. Discord's got you covered. I mean, they, they probably have told you all the brisket to get, all like the barbecued ribs, they, where to I go. Have so. an extensive list, a very extensive list, not just barbecue, but Tex-Mex, uh, Italian, anything you could think of. I've got a list of it and uh, I'm looking forward to eating it. Everything, love it. Now you've been enjoying your time off. Most recently you went to Guatemala. Was this a place you always wanted to go to visit or did you spin the globe and this was the place where your finger landed? Uh, I actually have a, a friend that I met uh, traveling. I really like traveling. Uh, I'm a big last minute travels, uh, just solo traveling by myself, uh, grabbing a backpack, staying either in a small hotel or a hostel. So uh, two years ago, I was traveling. I was in the Dominican Republic. I was down there to surf for a little bit, uh, was bunking up with a bunch of other people from across the world who were traveling. And I met a guy uh, named Marco. We hit it off. Uh, he's super smart, brainy guy, speaks five languages, worked for NATO. Um, and uh, basically we we kept in touch and he was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm back at home in Guatemala. Uh, if you got if you want to take a trip, you're you're welcome to come down here. And it was about the time that I was ready to take another solo trip. So I just hopped on a plane, head down there. And uh, we lived out of a truck uh, and, and in a couple of rooms uh, for for the weekend and just caught some waves. And it was a good time. I mean, you really take the phrase spontaneous adventures to its literal meaning. I mean, that, it sounded pretty spontaneous and what an adventure. Now, being the off season and in quarantine has made a lot of pro athletes extremely restless. You, on the other hand, seem to be pretty chill in your game room, just streaming and gaming. Does gaming provide an outlet for energy or just a way for you to decompress? Um, I think it's I think it's both. Uh, but definitely for me, I use gaming more as a, a way to decompress, especially during the season when I come home from work. You know, you're around the same guys every day, all year for eight months out of a year. Uh, and that can get on your nerves. So when I come home, I'd like to not really heap all of that stress onto my family. 
Uh, so I, you know, sit down, I'll play games for 30 minutes to an hour just to decompress and then go and, and be with everyone. But uh, also in quarantine, you know, lots of energy uh, and finding ways to really channel that into competitive gaming when you can't leave the house or the hotel uh, was very good for me. Does any of your teammates actually call you up and be like, hey, I want to hop in the game with you? Or you're like, hey, I'm not playing with you right now on the actual turf. So I'm just uh, I'm just doing me right now. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of guys, you know, on, on my previous team in Jacksonville, there were a lot of gamers uh, and, and they would get together. They they normally play just one game. They normally just play Call of Duty. Uh, but I'm kind of I kind of like to branch out more. I get bored if I play one game for too long. Uh, and that's the sign of a game like me really liking a game if I can stick with it for more than a couple of weeks. Uh, but, you know, when I when it was time for me to rotate back to Call of Duty and play some games, I would play with teammates. Yeah, Chris, let's talk about your gaming rig. How long did it take you to build this bad boy? What's under the hood? So my gaming rig was kind of the culmination of me learning a lot about computers. Uh, quarantine gave me a lot of time to be in the house. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to build uh, gaming PCs. So my gaming rig here uh, is a Ryzen 5800X, uh, 6900XT, uh, and uh, tons of memory and uh my RAM speeds, uh, it's a little volatile right now. We'll see if uh, with some updates I can I can clock it higher. But I have some pretty pretty fast RAM in there. I just can't clock it up all the way uh, and have the computer be stable. But uh, it's a great rig. Uh, I can run and get high frames. I can get 120, 140 frames at 4K. So pretty good. Are you overclocking your CPU with this bad boy? Um, I'm not. I'm not pushing it too far. Uh, I think that AMD has done a good job with their precision boost overdrive. It's kind of their auto overclocking feature. I played around with the overclocks. Uh, and when these chips first came out, it was, it was a little bit volatile. You know, I could push it a little bit and some days it would be stable and it'd be fine. And other days, uh, sometimes I would push it too much and it would become unstable. So I really just let it auto overclock. Uh, and it's been doing great for me. You know, I've, I've gotten five, 10 frames here and, and honestly, not many monitors can run over 150 frames at 4k. So, uh, it's, it's doing great. Chris, I am totally impressed. Uh, when I first built up my gaming PC, I just went to my friend who knew about PCs. He just gave me a part list and says, go for it. You were self-taught. So, you know, tip the hat to you, sir. Appreciate it. I made a lot of errors on the way and some were very costly, but I think that, you know, quarantine, it really pushed me to do stuff that wasn't typical of building your first PC. I built my first PC and five days later being bored in the house, I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to water cool. I stripped it apart and I bought a different case. I had a micro center down the street from my house and I, I literally learned how to hard tube water cool within five days of building my first PC. And I built that twice. And then I went small form factor and I built in a mini ITX case. And I said, you know what? That's not good enough. And then I learned how to water cool in a mini ITX case. Uh, and this all happened over the course of four months. It just makes you appreciate it that much more, too, that not only you built it, but you learn from this whole process, uh, you know, through that. Yeah. Now, I mean, if anything goes wrong with my PC, I can fix it myself. I don't have to ask anyone. I just had a pump die in my streaming PC. And before we got on the interview today, I just drained that PC, took it apart, uh, replaced the pump and put it back together. So uh, I think that it's of invaluable information. And I've been able to help a number of teammates, too. Uh, who have uh, gaming PCs, when they have issues, I can usually fix it for them. I know who I'm calling when uh, my custom water loop system goes goes bad. So thank you. <laughs> got you. I got you. <laughs> now, you're not just gaming on this battle station. You're also reading screenplays on it as well. Chris, you have to be the only athlete I know who reads screenplays. Now, I read screenplays every day back when I was at USC Film School, and I still enjoy reading them. Do you read these scripts to get inspired or just to see how the words from the page transfer to the silver screen? Mostly the latter. I like to see how uh, these films uh, translate to the screen, but it's so interesting to see how the medium uh, of film is, is transforming and who these young writers are and where they're going. Because, you know, when I finish football, I would love to step into a writer's room uh, or step behind a camera and direct things. And so it's more of a learning process for me having you know, gone to, I went to journalism school and found out later on in, in my college career that I wanted to work in film. And so now I'm kind of backtracking and kind to lay, trying to lay a foundation and learn 
uh, more of the technicalities of, of the creativity in the, in the industry. What kind of films do you want to make? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big comic book kid. You know, I, I, as a kid, my dad brought my brother and I and my sister these two big cardboard boxes that seemed like they weighed 100 pounds. Uh, and they had his whole comic book collection from when he was a kid. And I remember over a summer, uh, you know, when I was young, pouring through those comic books and becoming so inspired by those. Uh, and at around the same time, that's when I was introduced as a, as a young kid to Star Wars. And so I have this, this really unique connection to not only comic books, but sci-fi. Uh, and those are really what have inspired my creativity, you know, throughout the years. And I would love to get into those genres. George Lucas went to my film school, man. So I feel like I was inspired by him as a, as a young filmmaker myself. But here's a curveball for you, because you're on the Gamer Hour. Could you ever see yourself making a video game? Yes. You look at a lot of these games over the last five years, uh, story games, God of War, The Last of Us, uh, Halo. Uh, these, these games have really transcended uh, FPS. They've really transcended RPG and they've gone to the point where they have these cult followings who are in the games just for the story. Uh, so I'm such a fan of all of um, the storytelling that's in it. You can see the same techniques that you see in modern films in these games. Um, and so I've actually reached out to some of these, uh, these creators of video games and I've said, Hey, like, I want to know how did you transition here? What, what made you transition from wanting to pursue you know, the film world to wanting to tell your stories in video games, uh, because I think it's just as just as compelling. Chris, we not only love storytelling in movies, but also storytelling in video games. You told me that Titanfall 2 is one of the greatest FPS experiences ever. Now, was it the connection between the Titan and the pilot, the heart pumping action scenes of fighting while time traveling? What made Titanfall 2 go down as one of your all time favorites? You know, uh, I always say that movies are hard because in a short period of time, you want to make someone care about a character. You want to make them care about what's going on in the conflict. And in a video game, it's the same problem. Uh, you know, you have a, a certain number of hours to make someone care about these characters. And I think that Titanfall 2 uh, did what a lot of FPS games don't necessarily do. It connected with people on a on a, a human level, you know, you saw the humanity in BT, which is a robot, uh, and in AI, you you connected with BT. You understood the struggles of Jack Cooper. You you began to understand what this intergalactic war that was taking place was about. And at some point, you could really see, you know, the struggle from both sides and this power struggle for land and territory. Uh, and so it became real. How incredible was that time travel sequence where you're actually fighting through two different time periods? It was amazing. It was amazing. And I think that that uh, right there, you know, you're starting to see more games try to simulate that and simulate two uh, real time rendered uh, scenes at the same time. But when that game came out, that was that was kind of that was really revolutionary. People were talking about that at one level for months after that game released. And uh, it's still it's still a great play to this day. So I would encourage anyone who hasn't played Titanfall 2 to just play it and then think about when that game came out and how it feels in your hands. It, it really is revolutionary. Absolutely. Now, I know this is a hard one because you're also a Halo guy, but which campaign's better, Titanfall 2 or Halo 2? Tough one. Uh, I'm gonna have to go to go to Halo uh, because what what uh, Bungie and 343, uh, really Bungie, was able to do with Halo One and Halo Two changed the gaming industry forever. Uh, there they were really on the forefront of telling these stories that were bigger and greater and grander uh, than everything that was going on, and it was so well connected. But not only that, they were able to map these controls to a controller, and and that really uh, has made video games so accessible like it is today. Um, and so I think Halo 1 and Halo 2, uh, for me, will always be the GOATs uh, because we don't, get, we don't get Call of Duty if we don't have Halo. They're, they're the games that really set the standard for all the FPS games to follow that we have today. For sure. For sure. And now everyone thinks of them as normal and standard. But at one point, that was revolutionary. And Halo was when it was revolutionary. Now you're playing Titanfall Battle Royale, AKA Apex Legends. 
Uh, have you been on the Apex train since season one, or are you fairly new to Respawn's BR? I'm fairly new compared to most people because believe it or not, the first time that I played Apex Legends, I jumped into a game and I won the first game that I ever played. And I was not that impressed. Uh, I was uh, sorely missing some of the mechanics and the movement from Titanfall. Uh, and I thought that it fell short of that expectation for me. Uh, but I revisited the game and I think uh, season six and fell in love with it. And I saw the the characters that they were adding, the lore that they added, uh, and some of the balance changes that they made. And I really started to see what the vision was for Apex. And I've been playing it uh, really since season seven and a half, eight. Um, so uh, I've really been into it seriously for about a year now. Uh, and, and I'm a big fan of where it's going and they're adding even more Titanfall content. Now, you're not just into shooter games. You're also into real-time strategy games as well. What is it about this genre of gaming that made you fall in love with it? Um, I think uh, <laughs> it sounds terrible, but when I was a little kid, I liked to control things. Uh, I was always a little kid who would take uh, uh, objects and devices and take them apart, learn how they work, put them back together, because I that means I mastered that thing. Uh, you know, and, and RTS games were really... The, the video game equivalent of that. You know, I could control an army. I could balance an economy. I could have control over a battlefield and I could push and win. Uh, and so I, I played a number of um, RTS games, whether it was Age of Empires, whether it was Command and Conquer. Uh, my personal favorite was Battle for Middle Earth 2. Um, and I just really loved the way that those games could uh, allow you to exert a, a sense of strategy and control. Um, and I was a big fan of that. You know, I'm, I, I love war history and, you know, why not fight those battles ourselves? I, half the games you listed off there were, was my childhood as well. Rome Total War was huge, Command and Conquer General. So, dude, we're, we're speaking the same language here. Now, gaming is a social experience and is the entertainment medium that has kept your family close over the years. From you playing back in the day with your brothers, your cousins, and dad on split screen. Are you still gaming with your family today? Uh, not as much as we used to, but, but we still find time to do it. Who was the most competitive, though? Was it you or any particular brother, or were you, were you top dog? Um, I think that we were all very competitive at different things. I think uh, as we got older, my, my cousins kind of transitioned to Madden and 2K, and, and they're very big into those games, and I kind of... I'm not a huge fan of those. And I, I became more competitive in, in strategy games and, and shooters. And my brother's definitely more of a strategy shooter person as well. Streaming has really opened the door to connect with your fans on a more personal level. Uh, when you hop into the streams now, does it feel like you're putting on a show for an audience like you do on Sundays or more just a hangout spot with friends at this point? Uh, it's more of a hangout spot. You know, I have my stream, you know, it's, you know how streaming can be. It can be very volatile. You can have a bunch of people viewing and sometimes it can just be that core group. Uh, but that core group is always there. And with my core group, uh, I feel like it's just hanging out. You know, we're just chatting. We're catching up. Uh, a lot of us know what's going on, you know, general stuff in each other's lives. And we honestly want to know how those things are going. Now, Chris, we always open uh, every show up to the community. Uh, we're going to start off with Laffy Duck here. Uh, question. What's your favorite movie and favorite filmmaker? I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan, how he can take uh, things that you would normally say aren't grounded in reality and he can somehow make a way to make it make sense. Um, and I'm not sure if that's completely and totally him or if he just does a really good job of putting people, experts in different fields together to kind of bend the science to make it real. Uh, but there are a number of times where Christopher Nolan has has taken a concept and he has really hammered it out to the point where you go, well, you know, that could actually happen. Uh, he's even he's even grounded things as fantastical as, you know, Batman in the Dark Knight into a place where Bruce Wayne was a believable character that you thought, hey, that could actually happen. And then favorite film. Um, I always go back to this film uh, just because I can watch this film. It doesn't matter how many times I watch it. I love it. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing uh, is just such a such a big movie. Uh, I just remember watching it for the first time and just being hooked. And I've watched it every single time and had the same reaction. Um, I actually have some renovation going on in my theater here at my house. And as soon as it's done on Friday, that's the first movie I'm going to watch.
going back to your favorite film, I love it. Every time I see the movie Gattaca play, same thing for me. It doesn't matter if it's halfway through towards the end or the very beginning, I, I will then watch it and then all the way through. So I know the feeling. Dainty Calf 346 wants to know, Marvel versus DC, what's it gonna be? Uh, you know, when I was reading comics as a kid, I was a really big DC fan, a uh, humongous DC fan, and I still uh, love what DC does with their comics. Uh, I feel like the stories are very compelling, uh, and and they do dip into kind of that darker side. Uh, but what Marvel's really been able to do with their cinematic universe is unparalleled. Uh, the continuity is huge. Uh, the the film, the way that the films agree with each other, and they they don't really necessarily break the rules that have been set in that universe uh, is impressive. And to be able to do that over eleven years is. I mean, I don't know if we're going to see anyone else really get to this level and do this. I think they're hoping that Star Wars does it at some point, uh, but that's going to be a really tall task. Um, but I'm I'm so impressed uh, by what they're doing. And so, you know, given the fact that most people don't read comic books, I would say, hey, man, stick with the Marvel films. But if you're really, you know, available and ready to do the the dirty work, jump into those comics. You're going to know everything that happens before it happens, but it makes it so much better. And final question from Yoki. You hold the highest vertical leap in the NFL at 45 inches. How did you learn to jump so high? Uh, lots of practice, lots of reps. You know, I just, that's something that we always did at kids, whether we were outside playing or, or whether we were running around, it was always, it was always being active. And I think that uh, someone actually beat my record this year, but because there was no combine, uh, it didn't beat my record. But there was a kid who jumped to 46 this year. I don't know how official it was, but uh, very impressive, very impressive. Uh, it's not it's not that easy to get up there like that. Chris, great to hear. Are you ready to jump into a match of Apex Legends? I am. Great. Strap on your headset. It's game time. Chris, what legend do you run in Apex? Uh, I like to run Bangalore, but uh, really whatever the team comp needs. So I'm good to go. Perfect. I'm running Pathfinder, so I'll distract them in the air while you do the shooting and killing. Sound good? Perfect. Perfect. Great. Before we drop into Olympus, I have to present the official challenge for tonight. Chris, you want to take a guess what it is? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> we simply have to win a match with at least five kills each. Not too hard, right? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go terrorize some caustics and race. Let's drop. All right, I'll say let's go to, you wanna go to this one? Sure, go for it. Let's do it, let's do it. Here we go, let's go boys. Let's get after it. Got some guns. I don't think anyone landed here, right? No, it's just us for now. Uh, where are we going? We uh, going we got, yeah, we got, yeah, we gotta start making our way that way. All right, let's go. Yep, let's go up top. Let's get up here quick. I hate taking yeah, fights yeah, on the top. Uh, the nearest jump tower is over there. Gotcha. We got time. All right. See you on reach. the other side, mate. I'm going to go that way. Oh, you want to land? Or we can go this way. It doesn't matter. Actually, land it. Meet me at the market. Meet me at the market. All right. This, the market's always a highly contested area, so it should already be looted. It should already be done. So I hear gunfight, but it's further out uh, to the west. 292. Yep, yep, yep. Do you guys want to third party this? I'm with it. Okay. Oh, yeah, two teams. Two teams are fighting each other. Where? Can you ping? I'm pinging. No hostiles. They're, they're a little bit further away. I'm about oh, to they're... activate my ult. I think I might. If I see another one, I'm going to ult it. They're uh, they're on uh, rig. They're on rig. Okay, okay, I'm pushing. One's on top of the rock above you. Oh, I got that to a bad position. I'm trying to get out of here now. Oh, we got. I got an airstrike. Okay. Down one. Thirsting. 
Do you have boys with him? On me. Down to two. No, I got knocked. One. This guy's almost dead. He's almost dead. I'm on you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. He's no, he's no help. He's no help. The guy me. He's no help. Another guy there. Got him. Got him. Nice work. Nice work. Nice work. Finish him. Yeah. Nice work. Done. Finish him. Hey, yeah. And then the other one. Yeah. Right there. He picked me back up. At you. Give me a second. Thank you. Hey. Uh. Keep. Keep. Keep an eye out. There's another I'm watching, team. I'm watching. I'm watching. Uh, it's in rig. Yeah. Yes. Rig. And they're pushing to us. They have to because of. Yeah. Uh, they have to. Yeah. I'll, I'm gonna go right back to my box and grab my stuff. Nice work, Chris. Nice work, David. Uh, that's them fighting. Just don't get in a fight. Should I get? Uh, I, I could land on my stuff, right? There they are. They're out in the open. Can you ping it? Right there. Down one. Cir circle's coming. Oh, I'm about to Down die. I'm not going to be able to grab my stuff, but I will find... Finished. Ooh, can I grab? I think I can grab stuff from this guy. Got here. Oh! Don't, 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 don't. Finish. Can I get that guy's gun or no, is that a no-go? Can I get that stuff? Go for it. Go for it. The, the first ring doesn't hurt. You're good. Okay. There's a guy with res, uh, res shield in there. He was trying to res. I'm going to go get it. Cool. Uh, just know that because of it, the fact that his first ring, there still be might, there still might be someone yeah. in here. Healing up. I found another uh -huh. dead right body. Another team. In they the storm. Uh, we're good. They're they're running. Just make sure they don't jump me. Nice work keeping this alive. That was awesome. You guys, okay, now are we rotating left? Should we rotate left or right? Yeah, actually, probably ro ro uh, left through here. Here, 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 here. Take. Med kits, med kits, med kits, med kits. Thank you. Uh, I really I don't have. Need, I don't need to carry med kits, right? Cool, cool. You, yeah, you're. Uh, you're you don't need as much. If you not have, have any med kits, you want to have med kits. Drop. Uh, use your med kit, lifeline. Yeah, you need. You need to uh, heal up. How do red, I use? My... Red, red med kit. No, not no, that. That's not the wrong that. thing. Don't, don't you need to go to go to your inventory. Uh, what is it on the controller? Is it right bumper or left bumper or? Uh, yeah, you need it. Just your health, your health. Yeah. Should be the bottom left of your screen. Bottom left. Crouch down, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get down and um, see you number four for me is field? number four for me. What's in the bottom left of your screen for inventory right there? What does it tell you? What button uh, is that? Right next to your picture of your character. To the right Medkit. of it. I don't have any med kits. Oh, he has. You don't have any? No. Here, oh, here take mine. Here. Use it. Yeah, pick that up. Uh, pick I think up. someone's close. Pop it on, pop it on. Yep, I'm using it. Cool, he, he's popping it on. We're good. Yep, yep. And then pick up that uh, that thing you dropped right there, too. You'll be good. Um. Ooh, yeah, we're going to have to go this way, dude. Uh, Chris. We're going to have to go. You see, we're going to have to wrap around. We're going to have to wrap it. I'm going to try to, uh, to craft uh, some bats in a med kit. We got 40 seconds to to bounce. Shield batteries right there. If any guys need them. Okay, all right, guys. We gotta start heading out. So ra yeah, wrap with me. It's gonna start go, collapsing, go, go, you guys. Go. Start going yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrap with me. Wrap with me. Uh, that's two of the teams. Two of the teams are in. Uh, are in there. They should be on the far side. Okay. <sighs> this is going to be an intense final fight amongst these other yeah. teams. Everyone's going to be kind of clamping I, down. I think I think because of this ring, everyone's yep. going to be low. Yeah, I think so too. So you shouldn't, unless a team comes in late up there, then we're kind of in trouble. Yeah. But just make sure they can't. No hostiles? Sweet. I'm gonna get inside. Okay. Like in this roof. Yep. Dude, should we take? We should probably take that. 
Can you scan or not not scan the survey beacon? Can you hit the beacon? Yeah, where's that at? Oh, right there. Yes, good thinking. Good thinking. Great thinking. We're probably Come. gonna ha want to get up there. Yeah, we definitely want high ground. Uh, I can't believe there's shield. still five squads left, dude. Nah. Okay, I'm scanning it. Uh oh, someone's fighting right above yeah. us. Need to get up no, top. our intuition is correct. Go go to the next spot. Go to that, that next spot. We'll, we'll play and then we'll hold them off from the ring. Okay, there is a, there's one team over there. Just know that. Okay. Because there is a there's a care package that's open right there. Okay. So I'm, well, okay, let's start here. let's start wrapping, boys. We're in the circle. We're we're in circle. Wait. Oh, yeah. They I, can see us up top. You They're know what? The, uh, We're kind of good though here, right? Ulting that. Oh no, they're going too far. There's someone. In, there's someone right here in front of me. I got a heal. I'm almost dead. I got a heal. I knocked one. I knocked one. One down. One down, Chris. Thank you. They're, they're both in there. Oh, they're they're, they're, he's getting revived. He's getting revived. I don't know if it's worth it. Yep, downed him. I killed both of them! They're both dead! Get that red shield. Get the red shield. I'm almost dead. I'm almost dead. I need a heal. There's one more person here. Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me. Oh, two, two, both sides! Both sides! Both sides! Ah, uh, both... Chris, you got this? Oh, God! Oh. oh my gosh, dude. Stay alive. I was recovering this too. That's good, that's good. Tell yes. me if uh, I can't, I'm, I'm dead. I don't, oh, let me see, I see. Uh, you can third party this. Oh God. I just might have botched that. <laughs> They're all looking How for me. How are you still alive? How are you still alive? Dude, heal up, heal up. How is he still alive? I oh, two scots. Three, three on one. Three on one. This and is going to be the greatest win ever. This is going to be the greatest win ever right here. Come on, you got this. Let's go. I know, you got Let's do this. Oh, they got me. Oh, that's it. GG. Chris, I knew I should have been running Lifeline the whole time. My bad. We'll get them next time, though. All good. Appreciate the games. Chris, it's now time of the show for Review and Rating. Chris, let's review Apex Legends like we're film critics. I'll let you go first and describe the rich character development for each legend and the plots that intersect amongst players in a single round. Seriously though, what's your opinion on the game and how do you see it stacking up against other games in this genre? Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, what Apex has done, uh, creating unique characters in a battle royale that have unique abilities uh, is just different. Uh, there are some other uh, battle royales that involve abilities, spell break, uh, but most other ones uh, have different mechanics. Fortnite is building, Call of Duty is gunplay. Um, and the intersection between gunplay and ability in Apex, I feel like, is the perfect sweet spot. I think what really makes Apex different is its movement. And uh, right now, it can't be beat. Uh, it's the fastest movement uh, in a battle royale right now. Uh, positioning and, and thinking tactically uh, and saving abilities, using them at the right moment are really what make uh, the difference between someone who's very good at Apex and not very good at Apex. But um, I'm a big fan of the game and where it's at right now. I think it's grown leaps and bounds since season one. And uh, I think that it'll continue to do that. Agreed. I just can't wait till they uh, introduce the actual wall jumping, you know, the wall sliding that, that we're familiar to on Titanfall.
I, I yeah, I think they're going to introduce it, but I don't think it's going to be a game wide thing. Uh, you know, if you added wall running, it might be game breaking. It might be a little bit too strong for some champs. But I think that there is going to be a champ that's coming out in the next two seasons who one of his his passive ability uh, will allow him to wall run much like this next champ Valk uh, can hover in the air. Hey, man, I just want my Titanfall back. I'm loving the game, loving the movement. I would just love to see uh, more Titanfall in the game. I think we're going to get it. This next season uh, is called Legacy. Uh, and so uh, all the things that are going to be added to the game will be things that tie directly to Titanfall season one or Titanfall one and two. Uh, and I'm extremely excited about that being a big Titanfall fan. Uh, but I mean, I think to me, this is the the number one battle royale right now. A lot of other battle royales are experiencing issues, but Apex is going pretty strong. With all that said, on a scale of one to 100, where does Apex Legends land for you and why? Um, I would put Apex Legends at a 90. I'm, I'm someone who likes to play uh, very, very fast uh, when it comes to uh, shooters. Uh, I want I like movement. Uh, I like having to think on the fly. Uh, Apex really does all of those things for me. I think where Apex is missing that last 10 percent uh, is some of the audio issues that they're having right now. Uh, like like in some of the games that we played, there are some times where a team can run all the way up on you and the audio cue doesn't trigger until they're right behind you. That's something that needs to be fixed, something that needs to happen. Uh, because if you're playing a battle royale, that split second is the difference between you winning and losing a fight. Uh, but other than that, uh, and occasional bugs here and there, uh, I'm getting everything that I want from Apex. I don't play games really that often and that consistently for a long period of time. And Apex is something that I haven't gotten tired of. Same here. No, the game's really fluid, has a lot of you know great mechanics to it. For me, Apex has moments of sheer excitement and joy, especially when your team works together to successfully wipe out another team. Uh, the game does have its moments of boredom and staleness. Oftentimes after I land, half the server is already wiped out, and with every collapsing new circle and no action, I'm left thinking, is, is anyone in here? I think if the player count was increased, the game would be even more engaging from start to finish. So on a scale of The Room to Citizen Kane, I give this an Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. It's nostalgic, brings you back to the past, Titanfall and its former glory, and makes you want to go live in that world with the characters for a bit and then get the hell out of that nightmare. It'll never be as good as its predecessor, but it's still fun and adventurous nonetheless. Chris, you cool with that? I like it. Chris, an absolute pleasure having you on the show tonight. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Next time you come on, we're bringing the rest of your Houston crew with you. Sound good? Sounds good to me. We got to make sure they know how to play the game, though. For sure. Ladies and gentlemen, get off your couch or reclining chair to give it up for the future Houston star, Chris Conley. <laughs> Chris Connolly is making moves professionally and literally in gaming. Yeah, his emotes are next level. You can catch more of his Apex skills over at his Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash flightconley. And be sure to check out his YouTube channel, Flight Conley, as well. Stay up to date with the man on his socials. Follow Chris on his Twitter at Flight Conley and his Instagram at underscore flight underscore. It's that time of the show for me to go home and play. Mirage, yeah, because I obviously can't play with Bloodhound. I need those decoys. <laughs> Stop watching movies and start watching us on YouTube, Twitch, and the army of streaming channels that we're on. Stop swiping through Tinder and start swiping through our feed on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then look at the attractive lineup of guests we have coming up on the show at thegamerhour.com. They won't disappoint like your last first date did. We promise. From Reuters Studio in Times Square, New York City, I'm Travis Cochran. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now go bamboozle yourself, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Gamer Hour.